In this video, I want to show you how to plot the net present value profile, and then I want to explain to you why it's useful. And I have several examples here to show you how you can use this. So here I happen to have a project that uh, costs $10,000, has $3,000, 4000 5000 6000 in cash flows for the next four years. And I've calculated the NPV at 3.887.71 and the internal rate of return at 24.89. And I just use the NPV function in Excel, although noting that the NPV function doesn't actually calculate NPV. It calculates the present value of the cash flows, it calculates these present values, and then you want to subtract out the cost separately. Okay, and I also use the IRR function in Excel. Now, when you calculate NPV, you usually just calculate it for one interest rate or one weighted average cost of capital. What the NPV profile does is you want to plot the net present value for different weighted average costs of capital or interest rates. And you can see the relationship between WAC and NPV, but there's also some things on the graph that are really quite useful. So let's see how we can do that. All right, so I'm going to calculate NPV here. Uh, and I'm going to put in the formula, NPV, and then I'm going to put the rate in. This is the rate, and I don't want to lock the cell because I want it to be able to change. And then I'm going to put in these values, and I'm going to hit the F4 key so that it locks the cells. So when I copy it down, we're still using this. Um, you really only need to put the dollar sign in front of the number so that the rows don't change. This puts it in front of the, the um, column as well, which is the given by a letter. But that's not really necessary. And then plus the cost, which is already negative, and I'm going to hit the F4 key again. So I get an NPV of 8,000. Now, if I copy this down, and you can drag and drop it, or you can just uh, move over here and you can double click, and it'll fill everything in. And I have interest rates, and we said, let's see, at 10%, it's 3, 3,887 and 71 cents, which is what I got here. But this gives us the NPV for all the different values. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is I want to plot this. And then we'll be able to see something interesting here. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't want to do that. Let me just fix that. I just want to highlight it. I don't actually want to copy anything. And let me see if I can fix that column there. All right. So I've highlighted the cells. And I'm going to hit Insert. And rather than decide what kind of chart it is, I'm just going to pick Recommended Charts. And I know this is the one I want. This is what it looks like. Okay, I could have used this one as well. And let me just plot that. And so what do we see here? We see this negative relationship between the weighted average cost of capital and the um, net present value. But we also see right here on this axis where it crosses the x-axis, and you can't tell exactly, but that's where the internal rate of return is. So let me see here if I can move this out of the way a little bit. So the internal rate of return is 24.89, and if you look at this graph here, it crosses right there, which is, in fact, 24.89. That says it's 25, but there you go. So that's one use of it. So you can visualize where internal rate of return is, and you can also see the relationship between NPV and the weighted average cost of capital. Now, this is extremely useful when you have, for example, two projects that are mutually exclusive. 
So here we have an example where I've calculated NPV at 10%, and you can see that Project A has a higher NPV, but Project B has a higher internal rate of return. So what we do here is we can calculate something called the crossover rate. I've seen it referred to as incremental um, internal rate of return, where we create a third project, which is A minus B. So 500 minus, minus 400, 500 minus 400 is minus 100, et cetera, et cetera. And we calculate the IRR of this new project. And we call that the crossover rate. But it doesn't actually mean much to us unless we graph this. So again, let's calculate the NPV for both A and B. Uh, NPV of A, and I'm going to calculate NPV of B. And let's see if we can't do that. So I'm going to say equals NPV. I'm going to put in this interest rate again. And I'm going to lock the column because I want to copy it to B. And I don't want to have to type it in again. I'm going to put in a comma in. And then I'm going to put in these two cash flows. And I'm going to lock the row, so I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of the number so that when I copy it down, the row doesn't change. But I don't want to put it in front of the C or the column because when I copy it across, I want it to use D. And then we're going to subtract out the cost. And again, we don't want the column to change, or I'm sorry, the row to change. So let's see if I did that right. Okay, so I get 150. That looks right. 325 plus 325 is 650 minus 500, 150. All right, so let's copy this formula down. I'm just going to double click here. And then I'm going to copy this over here. And I'll copy this formula all the way down as well. All right, so I've calculated these. Let me format the cell here. I've calculated these two net present value profiles. So let me, let me highlight these. And let's see if we can graph it and see if there's anything interesting here. I'm going to go recommend it again. I'm going to go with this graph. And what we have here is we have the NPV profile for the two projects. And the blue one is A, and the orange one is B. Now you notice they cross here. This is why they call it the crossover rate. They're going to cross at that crossover rate, which I believe we calculated as, let's see, 11.8. Now when you look at the graph, you can see that A has a higher NPV here, and down here, B has a higher NPV. What does all of that mean? This crossover rate tells you where your cutoff is. For interest rates below 11.8%, A is going to be better than B. It's going to have a higher NPV. For interest rates above 11.8, B is going to be better than A. So you can't just look at the internal rate of return because B is in fact better than A simply because I used a low cost of capital. Had I used a higher cost of capital, say, you know, 13%, you would have found that the IRR for B was higher than the IRR for A. So this is a really great way to visualize what's going on here. This is how you calculate the so-called crossover rate, but you can do it graphically. And if you just want to look at the numbers here, we said what? 11.8. So, you know, just a little bit less than 12 is where the two NPVs are the same. 
at a higher interest rate, you can see that, let's say at 14%, you can see here that B has a higher NPV than A. And you can see at lower interest rate, say 8%, A has a higher NPV than B. Now let me show you the third case. So this is a case where we have this sort of weird cash flow. It's negative, then it's positive, and then it's negative again. All right. This is not usually what we see in cash flows, but this is not uncommon. If you happen to build a nuclear power plant, you know, you get cash flows at some point, but when you decide that the project is done, you can't just walk away from all that that waste. You have to clean it up, and that's probably going to cost something, and it's going to be a negative cash flow. You know, likewise, if you're into strip mining, right? If you're not familiar, strip mining is where you sort of go and you sort of just strip the minerals right off the land, and you're you know taking off the topsoil and you're 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 taking out all the trees and things like that. The problem is, is that you can't just do that and walk away. The state is probably going to require you to return the land to its pre-mining. Uh, um, uh, the way it was, so you're going to have to, you know, plant trees, you're going to have to, you know, plant, you know, um, replace the topsoil, or perhaps plant grass or something else so there isn't erosion, and in which case you may have this big negative number. So who cares? If we calculate NPV at 10%, we get a negative 0 0.05. If we calculate IRR, we get 10.11. But let's see what this actually looks like, NPV. All right, so let's see what the NPV is going to look like here. Again, same thing, equals NPV. The rate, this is the rate. These are the values. And I want to lock those rows. typing R instead of a dollar sign and then again subtract out the cost and again I want to lock that and what you see is you get a bunch of negative numbers and you get something positive and then you're going to get something negative again in fact if you if you plot this, you'll get something interesting. So again, let's say insert, recommended graph. You get a graph that looks like this. What is this? This project actually has two IRRs, one at the 10.11 and one over here at 42 or something or other. So you get two internal rates of return. And you can see that, you know, within that range, between these two numbers, you have a positive NPV. But if the interest rate is lower than that, it's negative. And if the interest rate is higher than this upper NPV, it's negative. So this is the case when you have these um, non-conventional cash flows, you, you'll get two or more internal rates of return, basically because you have two roots. It's a quadratic and you have two roots and you're going to get two numbers, right? Which do you use? If it was 42, right, whatever that is exactly, what you would find is that, um, you know, you'd say, well, I accept it for just about everything, but that's not really true. You know, it depends on what the cost of capital is. So, um, this is the case where, you know, again, graphing it is a way to actually see and understand what's going on here. So this NPV profile, which is, again, just the NPV for each different interest rates, and I could have used different increments, I used half a percent, um, it gives you a way, way to visualize the relationship between the NPV and the weighted average cost of capital for 
for an individual project with non-conventional cash flows, for two mutually exclusive projects, where if you do one, you can't do the other, right? You can find out that crossover rate. And if you're just doing one project, you can simply see where the IRR is by where it, it um, intersects the x-axis, but you can also understand the relationship between NPV and cost of capital. That is, that as the cost of capital goes up, the, the NPV goes down. So I hope you find this useful. This is a great way to visualize it and to get a better understanding of NPV as well as IRR.